Okay, folks. Tonight we're going to talk about float glass. Float glass is what you know as what your windows are made out of. But there was a day when you couldn't get uniform glass, so it had little ripples in it. In the 50s, an English company came across an idea. They melted tin in big vats, poured liquid glass on top of it, and got a uniform thickness of the glass. The glass floated on top of the tin, hence the name float glass. Now, this is what I do with some of it, and there are lots of other things you can do. Uh, this is a very simple picture of a cat. The glass was slumped and then acid A etched to give the image float glass. Then this one is another example of float glass um, that's simply painted with paints that are good for glasses. However, I would not recommend cooked or cut food because even though they may say it's safe, I never quite trust it. So it's good for bread or fruit, nut bowl maybe, but don't put things in that you're going to scoop out and eat if they've been sitting in it very long. And it's pretty washable, and they say it's dishwasher proof, but I don't believe that either. Do it by hand. This third example is float glass. The decoration is on the outside of the glass. And the decoration is something that we call frit. And you may think of it as glass crumbs. It starts out as a round piece of glass. It's fused to make this glass stick to the other glass. Then it goes over a mold like uh, stainless steel glass. And between the heat and the gravity, the glass drapes over that. And we have something that might be a container for flowers or potted plants. But it's more decorative than it is functional for food. And this is three examples of how we use float glass infusing.